It's a joy to be with you again, and but most of you, I think this will be on Sunday morning. Many others will listen later in the week, but it's a uh, wonderful opportunity to be together, even though we're not in the same room together. God bless you, and I pray that all of you, and I have been praying very ardently that all of you will stay well and not be affected by the virus that has uh, killed so many and uh, endangered the lives of others by the thousands still. And uh, we are asking God to bless his people especially, but all those that are sick to be able to get well. We, uh, a few weeks ago, started a series in which I thought I was going to be just talking about the characteristics of God. And uh, we looked at uh, what the Bible says about God. First John, uh, verse uh, 8 of chapter 4, says that God is love. And uh, we talked about that as one sermon, one message. And then I went on over to 1 Corinthians 13 and uh, verse 4, where it says that uh, God is love, yes, but love is and it defines what love is. And it talks about the fact that uh, love is patient. And we had a lesson last week on patience because it is one of the characteristics of God that we need to emulate. And then uh, today we've moved on to the second uh, characteristic as defined there in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4, and that is that uh, God is kind. The Bible uses the word kind a lot in kindness. And it comes from a root uh, word in the Greek, krestos, which uh, implies action. It's a proactive word. And uh, one of the ways it could be probably defined, which would be maybe too broad, is benevolence. It's acts uh, of good deeds that favor our neighbors. We're, according to Leviticus chapter 19, supposed to love our neighbors as ourselves. And that is an act of kindness when we do that. And we're going to talk about what that entails in a daily life uh, in all of our other activities. But uh, God has given us a wonderful example of what uh, kindness is in the giving of his son. When Jesus came into the world, he was a manifestation of the kindness of God. I want to read to you from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. And God raised us up with Jesus and seated us with him in heavenly realms and that in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace and express in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Sending Jesus into the world, his son, his only begotten son, John 3.16, in order to be able to save our souls, which we're told uh, is his purpose in Titus chapter 3, verse 4 and 5, where it says, but when the, king, when the kindness of the uh, love of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us. And so by kindness, uh, God sent his son to die for us on the cross of Calvary, pay the price for our sins that we should be paying. And uh, in doing so, he manifested his kindness. We think of kindness sometimes, I think, as being more of a polite attitude and uh, approach to other people, that uh, good morning, how are you doing? I hope everything's going great for you. Have a great day. Uh, all of those things, we think that's being kind. And, of course, that is being kind. But that's a little different kind of kindness than what Jesus manifested when he went to the cross of Calvary and died for us in a very horrible way. And uh, we know that uh, God loves us enough that he was willing to give his son. And we know that he now wants us to emulate him. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 tells us that we are to be imitators of God. We are to try to, according to Romans 8 and verse 9, have his spirit and uh, manifest the same spirit that, that God manifests toward us. And then uh, verse 29 says we're to have the image of Christ. And so uh, we are to be seen as people who represent Jesus because we are like him. And uh, we know that uh, 
Paul said, uh, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. Christ lives in me. And in Galatians 4 and verse 19, Paul said, you know, I have been trying to form in you Christ. And he says, I'm suffering the pangs of childbirth as I try to do that because it's difficult to help people become like God and to have the character of God, the spirit of God, the image of God, the nature of God. But that's what we're told that can happen uh, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. We can be like God and have that nature, and uh, we can be kind like he has been kind to us. And we are taught that we're to be kind. We find in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, a verse that, was one of the first ones I asked my sons and my daughter to memorize that says that we are to be kind and we're to be compassionate and we're to forgive one another as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven us. And so uh, kindness is a characteristic of God, but it's one that he demands of us. And uh, we're trying to do everything we can to understand what kindness is. The Greek word for kind or kindness the root is Christus, and uh, that word suggests action, deeds, doing things. Well, of course, when Jesus came into our world, he manifested kindness, Christus. He was willing to help people that were hungry. On one occasion, he had 5,000 men, not counting the women and children, following him and listening to his messages, and he was concerned that they might get uh, sick or that they might be faint and fall over before they could get back home. And so uh, he took, you know, the two fish and the five loaves and, uh, that a young man had and multiplied them and turned them into enough food to feed the 5,000 plus and to have 12 baskets of food left over. But that was all an act of kindness. And then we think about the widow of Nain whose son had died. She's a widow and she's lost her only son and Jesus brought him back to life. And that, that was just one. There were others like Lazarus that he brought back to the families that had lost them. And uh, we know that the resurrection is there for all of us, but I mean, he actually brought them back to physical life and showed kindness toward the family. Even something as simple as in a wedding, when uh, Mary lets him know that there's not enough wine, he changed water to wine and solved that problem. And then we think about the people that had leprosy that he cured and made their skin just like a baby skin. Think about the people that were laying in. He enabled them to walk. Blind, he enabled them to see. Deaf, and he enabled them to hear. Mute, and he enabled them to be able to speak. And all of that was kindness. And it's, as I said, a concept that is active. We refer to benevolence often as we do good deeds. And, and that's basically a way of describing what kindness is. It's being benevolent. It's what the doctors and the nurses and the policemen and the firemen and everyone else that are working to help uh, battle this coronavirus are doing right now. And uh, we have to appreciate their service and their sacrifice and sometimes even their loss of life as they do what they can to serve their fellow man. And we are taught that that's how we're supposed to be. We are supposed to be kind and compassionate the King James Version says uh, that we're to be tender-hearted in Ephesians 4.32. And so as we, we look at the, the grace of God and think about what he's done for us, I, I just uh, one verse I want to share with you, you know, Ephesians 2.7 says that uh, when Christ came, he showed the incomparable riches of God's grace expressed in his very life. And uh, in Titus chapter 3 and verse 4 and 5, we read, but when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us. Uh, Jesus hanging on the cross is truly an example of what love is and is an example of what kindness is. Uh, we all would have died and gone to hell for our sins. No hope of being saved if it weren't for Jesus being willing to be kind and to come to this world live as a human being, which was very humiliating, I'm sure, for him, being God among us, Emmanuel. But he did that because 
he loves us and because he's being kind to us. And as I think about our responsibility to be kind, I think about Jesus saying that, you know, Matthew 25, a uh, lengthy reading, that uh, when we are not willing to take care of the needs of other people, our fellow man and so forth, if we don't give them food when they're hungry, we don't give them clothing when they're naked, uh, show indifference toward them, that he says, you, and, and as much as you've done it to the least of these, you've done it to me. And so you can take the homeless on the street or some kid or whoever that you, you see is in need. And if you do something for them, you're doing it for Jesus, he says. And if you don't, it's as though you denied me those things. And I don't think if Jesus came to my door and knocked on it, I would ever deny him anything, knowing who he is. But uh, Jesus says it's the same as if somebody else comes to your door and is in need. And uh, you help or don't help. Uh, you're kind or you're not kind. God is kind because love is kind and God is love. And that's the whole concept of what we're trying to do through these uh, several weeks. And um, I think that we need to go back to Leviticus 19 and remember that we're supposed to love our neighbor as ourself. I think we need to take in consideration something I mentioned just last week, and that's the Good Samaritan. Uh, the Samaritans didn't get along with the Jews. The Jews didn't like the Samaritans. They, they hated them. And uh, yet when uh, the Good Samaritan comes along the road, he sees a man that's been ignored by a priest and a Levite that came by. He's been beaten up by crooks and thrown off in the side of the road to die. And uh, the Good Samaritan stops, gets off of his animal, goes over, picks him up, pours in oil and wine into his wounds, puts him on that uh, animal, uh, probably a donkey, and then carries him to an end and promises to pay all of his expenses. And he didn't even know the man's name, doesn't know anything about his family, doesn't know anything about his background, doesn't know, you know, why he fell into this group of thieves. And uh, he does know that he's a Samaritan. That was obvious. And so, but he still helped him. And that's the spirit of kindness that Jesus teaches us that we need to have and that we need to manifest. And if you go over to uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, and look at what uh, the apostle John, who was the beloved disciple of Jesus, says, he says, you know, if we see somebody in need and we just close our heart and our minds to that person and don't try to help, he says, how can the love of God abide in us? And the answer is it doesn't. And uh, consequently, when we turn people away, we're unwilling to hear their pleas, and their cries as they're desperate and don't know what to do, can't defend themselves. Uh, we're not being a good Samaritan, and we're definitely not acting like Jesus. And, uh, you know, God wants us to be like he is. That's why we're told to be imitators of God and to try to, uh, in every way, have his characteristics as we're taught in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. And then uh, there's just so many other passages that you can Look at the talk about us being Christ-like, having his spirit, according to uh, Romans 8 and verse 9. And we're told that if we don't have the spirit of Christ, we're not his. If we don't have the spirit of God, we're not his disciples. We're not his servants. And uh, also, we're told in verse 29 of that same Romans chapter uh, 8 that we are to try to, uh, in every way, have this, not only the spirit, but the image, what people can see, what people can observe, what people can analyze. We're to, we're to have the image of Christ so that he can be our older brother. You know, brothers look a lot alike, and uh, usually, not always, but uh, uh, Jesus is supposed to be our elder brother, and we are supposed to look like him. And people ought to be able to look at us and say, well, I think I, I know you don't. I know you, you know my Savior, and uh, I'm trying to be just like him. I'm trying to have that appearance. And so we're told uh, that we are to, uh, in every way, emulate Jesus. And uh, he was kind in every possible way. And we need to be a people that practice kindness. Charity is what it's called sometimes, which is another word for love. Benevolence is another term that's used. But we're just doing what Jesus would do given the same circumstances, and manifesting the love of God in the charitable way in which we treat others. And it, it applies to our everyday 
conversations with people, the way we do, you know, talk to them, the way we discuss their needs. And uh, I think that uh, sometimes we aren't as kind as we need to be. And uh, we don't do what God would have us do. But when that happens, we lose our connection to God. Uh, we're told in Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, we're to try to have the very nature of Jehovah God. And Jesus came to show us and to manifest to us what that is. And uh, I think that uh, it's unfortunate that the church hasn't drawn the multitudes of people that Jesus did. But if we don't show them the kindness that Jesus did, we can't expect them to come flowing into our buildings or into our homes or to give us a chance to tell them about Jesus. And so by our being willing to be a people of love, a people of patience, and a people who are putting into practice the kindness of Jesus, the sweetness, uh, we can draw people. I remember a story of a young man that went to church in one of our congregations, uh, and uh, when he went home, his father, who was not a believer, asked him, you know, well, what did you see? What did you observe? And he said, well, uh, we had a beautiful building, and he described it, and the people, and then he said, and uh, God was at the back door. And uh, this is a true story. And uh, his father said, you said, who? God? God was at the back door? Yes, he was. God was there. And uh, turned out that it was one of the elders of the church that always was at the back door of the building when everybody was leaving and asking them to come back and reminding them how much they were appreciated. And uh, he took time to bend down and talk to this little boy. And uh, the boy thought, well, this is where God is supposed to be. And I guess this is the man. <laughs> this is God. And, uh, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if everybody that met us thought the same thing? I just had an encounter with God. I, I, I just saw the kindness of God, the love of God, the patience of God. And that's why I'm going through this series of lessons, you know, taken out of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that talks about love and defines it and lets us know just who God is and how he is and encourages us to be that way. Sometimes it's hard. Uh, Paul told the Galatians that uh, he was suffering the pains of childbirth as he was taking these people who had already converted once and was trying to help them to be the kind of people they needed to be. And it, it's a battle. And it's a battle for me to be a, the person I want to be. It really is. And I'm sure you've gone through that same sort of experience. It's easy to not be as kind as we ought to be to our neighbors. But right now, oh my, oh my, do we ever have an opportunity under these circumstances that we're going through being, you know, confined to our houses, not able to get out. We can help people take them in places if we need to take them to the doctor or maybe to buy some groceries. We can help people uh, if we can take things to their house that they need, provide food for them if they don't have it. We're doing that here in Denver. And uh, I pray that all of you will examine your hearts and ask yourself, am I loving enough? Am I kind enough? Am I really doing what God wants me to do? And just remember, God is love. And he who does not love does not know God, according to the beloved disciple. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. And I hope this little short message has been helpful to you. Goodbye for now.